Genesis. I will close out the year with our regular services and bringing you a message from the book of Genesis and just trying to magnify our Lord. I'm glad that through Jesus Christ, our Lord, I know God. Amen. And if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you know God. Amen. People who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior make uh, pay homage to God, pay lip service to God, but they really do not know God. That's right. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, you don't know God. Amen. And I want to magnify the God that you and I have come to know. I want to point out some characteristics about our Lord uh, tonight from one uh, little statement that is made in Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. For time's sake, I just want to read two verses uh, tonight in Genesis chapter 21. If you'll go down to verse 33, we're going to read that one and the last verse. Would you stand with me, please, for the reading of the scripture? Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21, verse 33. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. I just want to read verse 33 one more time, uh, pointing out the last three words to you of the verse. Verse 33, And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Amen. We pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege to try to magnify you in the presence of people who claim to know you through faith in Jesus Christ. If there's anyone in our midst that is a pretender, I pray that the Holy Spirit would reprove of sin, righteousness, and judgment. May they see themselves naked without God, having no hope. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would reveal Jesus Christ as the hope of the world. May, may they believe on him unto life eternal. Bless your children tonight. Thank you for the privilege of prayer. We lay these petitions of tonight before you, believing that you are able and willing. And we look forward to answers to prayer in accordance with your own divine will, and by your own divine power. In Jesus' name we ask it all with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Be seated. Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Our God is everlasting. Amen. Amen. Some people think my sermons last forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you better show up for New Year's Eve Western service. You need to pray for the year to come that you'll be alive. A woman told her preacher she left the service that his sermon reminded her of the peace and mercy of God. And he said, well, wonderful. What do you mean by that? And she said, well, it passed all understanding. And I thought it would last forever. <laughs> I hope you bear with me as I bring you a message titled simply, simply The Everlasting God. The Everlasting God. Uh, you folks know that I preached not too long ago in Mobile, Alabama for the son-in-law of one of my favorite preachers in the world. Amen. And uh, he's in heaven today. His name is Leroy Wright. Amen. Uh, Brother Wright used to have a meeting once a year where he had friends and and preachers come from all over this the part of the South uh, that were within driving distance of Mississippi. He, he pastored Mississippi. His son-in-law's in pastoring Mobile. Mobile and Pascagoula, Mississippi, are not too far from each other. But he would try to encourage his preachers to let her rip. Yeah. But he would always qualify it by saying, and I don't know that I've got one of these in here. I may have put it back yonder. But uh, he said, it doesn't take eternity to preach on eternity. That's right. right. And, uh, and he kept him a, a, a bell up there. I've never heard him use it, but he kept him a bell up there. 
And he says, if you go too long, I will call you down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember ever calling anybody down in, in churches that I've hosted meetings of preachers that have come in. And, and uh, at one church I pastored, we hosted on July the 4th. We, we hosted a Saturday meeting for many years. But, um, uh, but I have been to one hosted by the pastor who led me to the Lord. And he told the preachers that they if they could cut it, keep it down to about 30 minutes yeah. each, that he would be able to preach more of them. And there was this young preacher that got excited yeah. when my pastor called on him to preach. And he got up there, and boy, he started letting her rip. He sounded just like a preacher that I knew that he must have followed and admired because he, he, was, he was just sounding just like him. And for about, oh, probably 25 minutes, he... he uh, he just read and raved and quoted scripture and was doing a splendid job in the sense that it was biblical and in the sense that it was energetic and he was really going with it. Amen. But the fact is, is he was just enjoying himself and, and never got around to the point of his message. <laughs> and about 25 minutes into his introduction, I remember him saying, he'd say it, and now I want to preach to you. And at that time, my pastor, J. Wallace Little, the guy who led me to the Lord, he stood up and he said, son, your time's done. Amen. I was into that. <laughs> he said, you can go get you a seat. And brother so-and-so, you get ready to bring the next message. So, so. Um, the Energizer Bunny in a television commercial for batteries is supposed to keep on going and going and going. But uh, truth is, 50 years from now, nobody will probably ever remember that commercial. Might not even be such a thing as batteries by 50 years from now. But uh, in the New Testament, the Bible says in Romans 16, 26, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God. That's Romans 16, 26. God is everlasting. He not only always was, God always shall be, and God always is. That's where it gets kind of difficult for you and me. God is the everlasting God. He is the God of now. Won't you listen to the way this is worded? Psalm 90, verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. The verse starts off saying before, and then it says thou art. Folks, my English teacher would say that that is incorrect. Mm -hmm. But I would correct my English teacher and say, it's correct about God. <laughs> yeah. Before the mountains were, that's past tense, brought forth, wherever thou hadst formed, that's past tense, the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. That's present tense. Yeah, it reminds me of how Jesus aggravated the scribes and Pharisees when he was on the earth and he said in John 8 50, 58 verily I say unto you before Abraham was I am, I am. Amen. was past tense I am present tense there's a place in Isaiah I'll give you one more like this Isaiah 43 13 where the Lord says yea before the day was, I am he. There's none that can deliver out of my hand. I shall work, and who shall let? Somebody asked, preacher, who made God? Here's the answer. Nobody. <coughs> Nobody made God. God is the first and the last. There's no God before him, no God after him. He is it. Okay? God has no beginning, for he is the beginning. God has no ending, for he is the ending. I want to brag on the everlasting God. Amen. I want to point out some things to you. Number one, his supremacy is everlasting. He is better and more powerful, more sovereign than anybody, and that never changes. Now, he may not manifest it, for instance, at Christmas time, I think a lot of people get the idea that when Jesus Christ came into this world, then uh, that was the king coming and he set up his kingdom on the earth and that he's ruling today. 
Well, the Lord has got the Lord is sovereign, okay? And the Lord's got a plan for this world. But I'm telling you, when the Lord actually rules this world as king, there'll be no abortion clinics. Right. Amen. Okay? There'll be no pornography. Amen. There'll be no divorce. Amen. There'll be no uh, drug uh, areas of town that you're afraid to, to go into. Amen. I'm saying there's coming a time when Jesus will be king on the earth. Amen. But he is supreme, and his supremacy is eternal. It is forever and ever. Before the first being that God created uh, was created, the Lord is supreme. Before that Lucifer decided to revolt, revolt and rebel against God and say in Isaiah 14, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the most high. Before that that ever happened, God is supreme. Yeah. When it happened, God is supreme. I'm saying he has supreme power forever. Yeah. Kings and kingdoms come and go. There was a time when the sun never set on the British Empire. Yeah. Right. There was a time where they, they called it the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, uh, just a, was massive and enveloped and dominated the entire earth. Yeah. But the fact is, God is supreme. God was supreme then, and God will supreme, be supreme in the future. Yeah. There's nothing that guarantees that the United States of America will exist yes, right. as a government 10 years from now. Yes, right. There's nothing that I know of in the right. scripture that guarantees it. If there's anything that guarantees it, it will be people in power that turn to God. Yeah, that's, right. that's about the only thing that might guarantee that it will stay around is if the president bows down and says, the Lord, he is God. Mm -hmm. if, if the uh, head of Congress, now thank God for churches and no doubt that there are righteous people that can hold back the judgment of God. We know that from Abraham's bargaining with the Lord when he was trying to get uh, Sodom spared because of his nephew Lot. Right. Y'all remember that? Yep. We know that the presence of righteous people can spare people of the venge vengeful hand of God and the execution of God's wrath. But uh, uh, if you want to guarantee for America to be preserved, uh, you see America get some judges that recognize the Bible right. as the final authority. Hey. You, get America, you see America get a president to get up every morning and read his Bible. Come on. You see some congressmen that'll, that'll say, well, before we put this into law, we need to remember that the Bible says, now when you get some of that stuff happening, you can say, America may hang around uh, for a while. The kings and kingdoms come and go. God remains and he remains on his throne. God has supreme power forever. He has supreme plans forever. Uh, he doesn't plan everything that people do. He doesn't make lost people do wicked things. But he, but he has a plan from beginning to ending. He planned for the Savior to come into this world. He planned for him to be crucified on the cross of Calvary. He planned for him to rise from the dead and nobody be able to stop him. He has planned for the second coming. And he has planned for great things ahead. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the, with the glory which shall be revealed in us. That's because of God's plan. Amen. I am not a Calvinist, but I have been predestinated yeah. according to God's plan. Right. I wasn't predestinated before I got saved. It was predestinated before the foundation of the world that we which are in him should be holy without blame before him in love. And we have been predestinated under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself. You weren't adopted when you got saved. Right. You are born. You are, according to Romans 8, 23, waiting for the adoption. Mm -hmm. You know when the adoption takes place? Adoption takes place at the rapture. Amen. Romans 8, 23 says we groan within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Amen. One of these days you will never have to put a bell prayer request saying, church, pray for me. I want to lose weight. Amen. Pray for me. I need a discipline. One of these days, our bodies will be in perfect shape. Amen. Amen. Perfect discipline. I think we'll. I think in eternity we're going to get to eat too. Yeah. 
<laughs> Amen. Amen. And we won't have to count calories. We won't have to count yeah. carbs. We won't have to count nothing. Walk. Amen. Right. So we want to eat for the sheer joy. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I believe that. I believe one of the first things that I'm going to say, I'm going to follow the Lord's leadership. I'm going to say, when I get to heaven, I'll say, children, have you any meat? <laughs> you find that in scripture sometimes, I resurrected the Lord. Wanted, wanted to know if there were some fish sandwiches. Yeah. The Lord has supreme prophecies forever. All of the Lord's prophecies come true. Amen. Everybody Amen. else's need to be taken with a grain of salt. Right. Right. Yeah. I remember in 1988, there was a guy who published a book. I mentioned in our Bible Institute class. He published a little booklet called 88 Reasons Why the Lord Will Come in 1988. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody remember back that far? Yeah. Do you know that did not come true? Right, right. Yeah. Needless to say, he had to revise his prophecies, and they finally just gave up. Yeah. Ditto Harold Camping, if any of you remember Harold Camping. Mm -hmm. His supremacy is everlasting. Number two, his standards are everlasting. I'm glad that what God says is right, is right, right on. <laughs> and if it's wrong, it's wrong, right on. That's right. This book doesn't change. Hey. The Bible says of uh, the Lord's standards, it says, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. That's Psalm 119, verse 142. I've been around for a while, not as long as some people, but I've been preaching for a while, and it's broke my heart to see preachers and church members lose their convictions about sin and about holiness. The message I'm preaching to you, I basically preached this message the first time in 1979. Amen. I'm preaching it to you uh, tonight. What is that? 43 years later, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure that I may uh, be different on some things, but I'm telling you that what I know about, uh, that I believe uh, after getting into the ministry, and I've been pastoring for two years when I, let's see, four years when I preached this message the first time, I'm telling you, I had to change my mind because God hasn't changed his standards. Mm -hmm. His standards are everlasting. His definition of sin is unchanged. Sin is always the transgression of the law. Yeah. Whatsoever is not of faith is always sin. Yeah. All unrighteousness is always sin. The thought of foolishness is always sin. And departure from sin is always commanded. Yeah. Not only departure from sin, but we're to depart from the very appearance of evil, the Bible says. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 22. So God's not, God's not changed his mind about it. If it looks wrong, stay away from it. Amen. Amen. Look impeccably Christian. Mm -hmm. Look identifiably Christian. Talk identifiably Christian. If you've got any diet, if you got any doubt at all about the game, if you got any doubt at all about the activity, mm -hmm. about the amusement about the language, about the book, about the show, ditch it if there's any doubt about Amen. it. Because whatsoever not of faith is sin. And deliverance from sin is the everlasting purpose of God. His standards are everlasting. Number three, very closely related to that, his statutes are everlasting. His statutes. And I'm talking about, do you know that there are still things that are on the books that are listed in certain states as being illegal, <laughs> that the government is promoting That's today? Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know there's some states that haven't taken them off the books, they just haven't enforced them? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about laws about sodomy. That's right. And some of the things that are going on today, God hasn't changed his mind about them. Right. 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 These these wicked these wicked doctors that are that are profiting. Uh, off of people's wickedness and their sin mm -hmm. and and mutilating yeah. boys and girls right. who somebody has decided that the boys should be girls and the girls should be boys. Right. Yeah. Yeah. God hasn't changed his mind about that kind of Amen. nonsense. Amen. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. His statutes are settled forever in heaven. Amen. That's right. 
They are steadfast on the earth, and I've got a copy of it. And they are sure, even after heaven and earth pass away, because Jesus said that when that happens, my words shall not pass away. Well, let me get a little more sweet and positive. Yeah. His salvation is everlasting. Amen. 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 The Bible says there's a future salvation for the nation of Israel coming up, but it uses the words in Isaiah 45, 17, that Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Amen. I'm glad to say that every New Testament believer has an everlasting salvation. Amen. If you're saved, you're saved with an everlasting salvation. Amen. Or you didn't get saved. Right. That's the only kind of life that God gives. It's everlasting life. It's an everlasting pardon that God gives us. It's everlasting power that keeps us saved. It's everlasting promises that assure us that we'll never be plucked out of the Lord's hand. He's saved in His hand. His salvation is everlasting. I want to say that through every difficulty, through every age, as you get old, as you get weak, as you get sick, I want to say that the Lord's support is everlasting. Amen. I might put it this way if I were to preach a message just on this point. That is, you can always count on God. Amen. His support is everlasting. Amen. Deuteronomy 33, 27 says, The eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath, that's right, and they wrote us a hymn about it. And underneath are the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. The Lord's support is such that he loves us eternally. Amen. He looks after us eternally. There's never a time when God isn't aware of what you're going through. That's right. right. Amen. Yes, I prayed today when we were stuck in traffic, yeah. praying for the Lord's will to be done. His eye is on the sparrow. Yep. There's not one sparrow fall to the ground without your father, Amen. Jesus said. Amen. And if he cares about the sparrow, Amen. Jesus said, you're worth many sparrows. Amen. He lifts us up eternally. I'm glad that when I get down, he is there. Yeah. His support is everlasting. I thank God for a number of people in this church for your moral support. I'll be honest with you. I, I try to preach regardless. I try to be faithful regardless. If you're not here, I try to be here regardless. If, uh, if you don't say amen, I try to preach the truth regardless. <laughs> but the fact is, I thank God for people in this church that are moral support. Amen. But when your brother or sister doesn't seem to pay attention to what you're going through, the Lord, he's there. Yes, amen. He's there. I promise you he's there. And you may not sense him, but I promise you he's there. Amen. And one of these days you may have to admit to him in glory what Jacob said. He said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. He looks after us eternally. Let me say, if you're not saved, let me conclude with this. That is, his sentence is everlasting. Just like his salvation is everlasting, and you and I have everlasting life, I want you to know, if you die without Jesus Christ, you will die and experience eternal torment. Right. The Bible says in Matthew 25, 46, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment. We've got people here in this auditorium. You've got family members and friends who are either are in prison or have gotten out of prison or are headed to prison. And a number of them have gotten off. A number of them have gotten off uh, prematurely through good behavior, through pardons and one thing or the other. But the fact is, when somebody dies mm -hmm. under the wrath of God, right. there's no pardon That's after right, right. you die. Right. There's no uh, parole for good pro behavior. And there's no purgatory. That's a Roman Catholic myth. Yeah, come on. Right. The right. sentence of the Lord is eternal. Is eternal. And my friend, if, you're, if you have any doubt about your salvation, tonight is the night get that thing said Amen. before it's eternally too late. Yeah. Yeah. Stand together, heads bowed before our everlasting God.